One of the things that really gets my engine going in the morning, waking up and realizing I have an opportunity today to really help more beekeepers learn a lot more about bees. You know, I'm kind of taking my years of experience and finding a way to present them here on YouTube to beekeepers that can really help you become the best beekeeper that you can be. I've been on YouTube since 2008, so I'm going on my 16th year, over a decade and a half of making beekeeping content here on YouTube. And it's been a quite a ride, I've loved it. And today I wanted to share with you uh, an important part of beekeeping that is oftentimes not discussed. And so we're gonna just talk about it, just me and you. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about it over a cup of coffee because it really is something that stands in the way of beekeepers reaching their full potential. Before you say to yourself that you don't have this struggle, hold on, I know you might think that you don't, but I've got to clarify it because I kind of think all beekeepers do struggle with it because I know all people in life struggle with this one. And so whether it's beekeeping or if you're not a beekeeper and you're watching my channel today, what I'm gonna talk about will help you in life as well. So look at this, Bobblehead Dave has got a pair of sunglasses on because the camera is supposed to focus on my eyes and his eyes are so realistic that the camera would oftentimes focus on his eyes and I'd, I'd sit here and make a video and it would be blurry, my face would be blurry. So Carol uh, Livingston was so kind to make these, I don't know if she made them or got them, but got sunglasses for Bobblehead David, and he's just the coolest thing now. I think back to what I wanna share with you. Now, stay with me for the whole video because I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of this. The problem that keeps people from really becoming the beekeeper that either they wanna be or they aspire to be is that they are struggling with fear. Now, hold on, before you say that you're not afraid of bees, it's more than that, it's more, it's more than just being afraid of being stung. It's more, it's more than just being afraid that your bees may die. So let's, let's take it from a, a unique perspective today that's gonna help you in beekeeping and in life. Because there are those that wanna start beekeeping, but they're afraid of bees. And they simply mean that I don't like being stung. I'm afraid of stinging insects. And so there's that. Then there are people, beekeepers that say, I'm afraid I won't be good at it. They're not really afraid of bees. You know, maybe they're tough. Maybe they're used to working farm animals and such. And so they're not really afraid of bees, but they're afraid of not being successful at keeping their bees alive. And they're struggling with the idea of, can I, can I get it? Can I do it? It's a lot to it. And then the next level of fear that I find everybody struggles with in the beekeeping community is, at some point, there's something about bees and beekeeping that you fear. For example, I didn't really uh, want to get into queen rearing. So for a long time, I was afraid that I could not figure out how to raise queens. Now, this was a long time ago. I've been raising queens many, many years. But in the beginning, I was just a beekeeper, but I wanted to raise my own queens. That's one example. Another example is, Sometimes people want to get into lip balm or candle making or making mead. Now, mead is a great thing to make if you're uh, wanting to have uh, a different type of item that you could uh, enjoy from your hive. It's, it's an alcoholic uh, combination of water, honey, and yeast. It's kind of like the oldest, allegedly the oldest alcoholic drink. It's, it's mead made from honey. And so a lot of people enjoy that, but some people are afraid they can't figure that out. So fear is what holds us back from reaching our full potential. It's amazing if you stop and think the number of things that we haven't done, that's because we're afraid. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, I'm a tough guy or I'm a tough person. I don't have to, I don't have any fear. I, I don't fear anything. You can say that all you want to, but I'm telling you, there are times that we fear something and we don't pursue it because we fear it. And even though you might think you're tough, you're not afraid, you fear nothing, maybe fear isn't the best word, but there's an apprehension, there's an anxiety about doing something 
that keeps you keeps us from doing it. And when we don't do it, we are missing out on reaching some full potentials. Now, one of the things that that I force myself to do, and I've, I've done this uh, most of my life, and that is I know I'm going to fear it. Fear is something I have to face because as a person, we're supposed to be afraid of things. It's good that we have fear. You get too close to the edge, my gosh, I hope you fear falling over the edge, right? <laughs> That's why little kids crash a bike and they can't, they get, they get scared of trying to get on the bike again because it hurt to fall off. It's, it's a protective way that we stay alive. We have healthy fear. And so that fear is, it's in us and we have to struggle with it. But there comes a point when if we let fear have too much of a place in our thought processes and our life, then it keeps us from reaching not just our full potential, but it keeps us from doing what we enjoy. My wife is a good example. I'll use Sherry as an example. She loves to travel. And so she has, um, she's traveled a lot. She and I have traveled a lot over our lifetime. And she oftentimes says, I'd like to try visiting this place or that place. But then she realizes sometimes I don't go with her because I'm busy making videos for you guys or something. So she has to go all by herself. Now she's been recently on some trips um, across the pond all by herself. And there's a, at the moment where she starts thinking, Will I make my connection flight? Will I be able to find my hotel in this foreign country, this unique city that I've never been to? I, can't, I don't speak the language. Maybe I shouldn't go on my trip. Maybe I don't want to go and have to deal with flight delays or flight issues, travel issues. And, but she has just put herself out there and said, you know what, I'm going to do this. And whatever happens, I'm, I'm just going to overcome it as I can. A little bit at a time, I'm going to just be brave and I'm going to get through it. And she amazes me because I know her level of fear is high. You know, a, a woman by herself traveling to different places, trying to catch flights and trains and taxis and can't speak the language and all. But her desire and her love to travel supersedes, overcomes her fear. And so when she gets home, she feels like a very, you know, gold medal Olympic winner because she overcame her fears and she accomplished it. And what she accomplished was so rewarding to her to think that that bolsters up her confidence and it, it starts stripping away the fear because now you've done it. Once you do something, it's not as fearful. You know, when you go on a roller coaster ride, for example, the first time you're like, oh my gosh, upside down, you're going to just be spinning and going fast down the slopes and all. I don't know if I can handle this, but you do it once and you, you live <laughs> and you think, okay, I can do this. And so you get a little more confidence. And next time you ride it, you enjoy it more because you're not filled with fear that you're going to die, you know? So now you can open your eyes, not, not, you know, grab a hold of the bar so tightly, hold your hands up and enjoy it. Now that's the way life really is that's the way beekeeping is. There's a lot about beekeeping, I'm sure. I'm speaking to a lot of you about life and about beekeeping that you're holding back because you're living in you, fear's got a grip on you. Fear has fear is keeping you from exploring. And when you know when you're little, when you're a kid, gosh, I got hurt so many times as a kid because I was fearless. Okay, stupid. <laughs> you want to call me that? That's fine. I'll admit. I broke my arm once because I was stupid. I got a concussion once because I fell off a roof because I was stupid, okay? I got stitches for being stupid. But rather than say stupid, I was just fearless. I thought I could do that. I thought I could accomplish these things without getting hurt. So fear, now am I a, am I a person that experiences fear? Yeah, as a kid I feared things, but there were other things I was willing to risk. And so today there are still things. I started a bee business many years ago. Was I afraid? Absolutely. I quit my day job, my main paying job. I quit it. And now I had to make a living off of insects. And when you, when you go into business for yourself, um, there's fear because you give up, maybe you give up health insurance, you give up uh, a larger organization that has 
places for you. If this particular job doesn't work out, they can put you here, put you in this city, put you in this country, whatever, and you have more options because you have a, a hierarchy of, of the employer that can take care of you. But, but when you give that up and now it's up to you to make a dollar and you're going to make a dollar off bees, I had fear about I. Yeah, I had a lot of fear. I, and when you start a business, some of you asked me, you know, why don't you do a video on how to start a bee business? And I, I probably should. Sherry is the expert. Sherry has a degree in business. And she would be the one that you would want speaking at your bee club on how to really run a bee business. But um, I think for me, the bee business is no different than any other business. You have to have business skills or develop them on the on the way of being successful. You have to learn it. So... Instead of, you know, there's no really fine art to be, to have a bee business rather than a pottery business or a biking business, whatever your business niche is, it's still the same principles. You have to know your product. You have to know uh, your customer base. You have to know your profit margins. You have to know all the tax laws. You have to know the employ employment laws. You have to know everything about business. You're as a beekeeper, you're just dealing with bees and hives and woodenware. It's just, it's just different. But my fear was really intense in beekeeping. And it's not so much anymore because I've seen too many bad scenarios that I was able to overcome. So then I don't, I don't fear them anymore. If they happen again, and they do, I don't fear it because I've got the skill to overcome it. Better yet, I've got the skill for it not to happen. And in beekeeping, um, if you're starting in the spring and you have fear about bees, like let's let's take the simple fear that you're afraid of being stung. Okay, face it, you're likely to be stung. But now you can take the steps not to be stung. How? Well, no guarantee that you're not going to get stung a little bit, right? You're working with bees, so you've already accepted the fact that being stung is highly likely. However, gloves, smoker, protective gear, right? I would say, for me personally, I can avoid being stung 100%. I'm not saying that you can, but I remove bees from houses and structures and businesses. And when I do that kind of work, I know how to dress accordingly where I can do my work without being stung one time. So now if you're new to beekeeping, you may not know those skills. Like you may wear the wrong type of veil and the veil may kind of the wind may blow it against your nose or if you're working on a building removing bees and your veil is like the like a parka hat veil that's kind of like this you look up and the veil falls against your face anywhere where that veil is touching your face for example a bee can land there and sting through the veil so that's why you see me wear the round veils around my head so that the mesh doesn't go against my face so i know all of those techniques how not to be stung but they are hot, and most of the time I work bees, I have very little protection on. You'll, you'll never really ever see me without a hat and a veil. I always wear a hat and a veil because I want to protect my eyes, my lips, my nose, you know, ears, forehead, temple area that's sensitive. So you can take the necessary steps to avoid being stung as much as possible. And once you get stung somewhere, like for example, you might get stung on your socks, and you think, oh my gosh, I didn't realize there's a gap between the bottom of my bee suit and the top of my shoe. Lesson learned, right? Okay. And now you know that you have to wear boots and you have to strategically place your bee suit. I like to place it on the outside of my boots if I'm working a very hot hive or removing bees all day long. Sometimes I've been known to tape with Gorilla Tape or masking tape or something, my bottom of my bee suit to my boots but the boots come up inside my suit. Because let's face it, those bees will find a way in the smallest of little opening, right? A zipper's not touched right. I remember one time I was working bees last summer and I'm like, why are there bees flying around inside of my veil? Why? And then I looked down and I had just forgotten to zip my veil. It zips up to your suit so you can pull it back or pull it forward and zip it up. I just forgot to zip it up. They found a way in. Now, they didn't want to sting me. They were just curious and got into my veil. That happens too, right? And the worst thing you want to do is actually take that off in the bee yard where their bees are all flying. Now you don't have any protection at all. I'd rather deal with two or three bees in my veil than take off my veil when I've got a hive open and deal with hundreds of bees in the air around me with no protection. So walk away and then open it up, 
and let the bees out, put it back on. <laughs> so fearing bees is something that you can get over. Now, some people have a legitimate reason to be afraid of bees, and that's because they have anaphylactic shock. That means your throat's going to swell. Um, your blood pressure could drop when you, if you have anaphylactic shock. You could, it could work systemically through your body and, and kill you, obviously. And so you need to understand that there is a legitimate fear if you have anaphylactic shock. You really should not be, in my opinion, keeping bees because it's too risky. A lot of people with an anaphylactic shock will keep bees and they will just, like I said earlier, take every precaution necessary. They have their cell phone on them. They have Benadryl. They have an EpiPen. They have told a neighbor or their significant others that they're going to go work their bees. Can you go out there with me and watch me make sure I don't get stung and pass out? Whatever, you know, ready to call 911. Some people love bees that much. Okay, I'm good with that. I get it. I would probably be the same way. When everybody tells me you shouldn't do that, I probably would. I get it. But there's that level of fear of, of being stung by bees. Now, the next level of fear is you, you're afraid of venturing into new areas of beekeeping. And I, I really want to motivate you to rise above and tackle that fear like Sherry does when she travels uh, and, and overcomes her fear of traveling. You've got to overcome that and say, I want to raise queens. Why do I fear that I can't be good at it? Who cares if you're not good at it at first? All right, you're not good at it. You will get good at it. You won't get good at it until you jump in and do it, right? Practice makes perfect. Actually, perfect practice makes perfect. But until you practice stuff, you're not going to be good at it anyway. So why fear failure? The only reason you should uh, fear failure is fearing ever to start trying. You know, uh, we're all going to fail when we start out. It's rare a person could start any type of, of business, hobby, beekeeping, anything, queen rearing, and be perfect at it from the very get-go. That just doesn't happen. If you're that person, you're just flat out lucky and we're jealous. So you're going you're gonna to have to overcome the fear of starting. I'm having a nice cup of coffee and enjoying this moment with you. So step out in confidence. If you're, if you're not living on the edge, um, I say, how does that go? If, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. <laughs> so you got to live on the edge to really enjoy some of the victories that you can experience that are on the edge. Some of the best fruit is way out there on the edge of the limb that you have to climb out there and get. And so it takes a little effort. Let's face it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And so it makes us feel good when we do something that not everybody can do. Not everybody wants to do it, but we, we want to do it. That's a lot of fun. So overcome the fear of something being new to you. Everything is going to be new if you've not done it before. Now, the final level of fear I think that we struggle with is that moment when um, we want to make a big step. We want to make a big leap. For example, like I was sharing with you, when I started my B business, I quit my other job, my other career. So I spent, I was educated, I was trained, I, I had specialty skills in that, in that other career. I had the history of it and well known, well, um, uh, whatever, but I, I, I was really good at that. So when I quit, it was a lot to give that up. Everybody knew me as that person in that field of work. And they couldn't believe that I wouldn't do that anymore. I gave that up uh, before retirement, let's, let's so, so to speak. So, but it wasn't that beekeeping was something that I wanted to get into so bad that I, I gave up my other career. It was that I wanted so badly to give up my other career and I had a love for bees. I had a love for beekeeping. But sometimes we are motivated to get out of something and get into something that we kind of fear. We need, we need things that are uncomfortable. So anytime you're experiencing being uncomfortable that you're not happy where you're at, sometimes not being happy is the motivating factor to get you to, to prod you to overcome your fears and to try something different, to try something new. It's okay to even be, you know, if I would have started my B business and it didn't work out, I didn't like it. Okay, I've got other skill sets. I've ran computer businesses before. Um, I would fall back on some of my other skills. And I would just keep trying to do that until I found something that was fulfilling for me. Fulfillment is better than happiness. That's my opinion. I may be wrong. I'm not a philosopher. But I have lived long enough to realize I can be happy today 
But later today, I can be sad. My happiness can leave me. It might be temporary, you know what I mean? Fulfillment stays with me. I liked pursuing living a fulfilled life. And for me, I do, I am living a fulfilled life. You being a part of my Beak Squad community, I'm very fulfilled to have a following on YouTube that wants to listen to me that I can help in beekeeping and life like today. That's fulfilling for me. But getting here was a struggle. Getting here was painful. Getting here had a lot of fear. Am I fearful when I make a video? A little bit. Uh, not much, but a little bit. I'm fearful that it's going to take longer to edit it than I thought. I'm fearful that I may have said something that now that I listened to it or published it, I shouldn't have said that. I'm embarrassed that I said that. You know, because sometimes I talk off script freely like this. Most of the videos I make, I don't have a script. And so letting my mouth run like this, I can say things that I wish I would have worded better. So I'm like, ooh. But I feel like there's a, I feel like I have a following or a community of you that are great people that will give me a little slack. If you know I said something that could have been said better, then I, I know that you're going to cut me a little slack because that's just, that's what it's like when you're behind a camera, right? You can't edit uh, a whole section out because you misspoke a, a couple of times or something. But I, I have a little fear when I make videos. Do I fear that they won't do well? Like, oh, I thought that video would do better and I don't have the views. I don't fear that. I'm in the video I'm in the video world, the circle of making beekeeping videos. Not in, I'm not in competition with my peers that make videos. I'm not trying to please my audience in the sense of, tell me what to do better, I'll change my life. Because I, I will to an extent, but you know, if you tell me the sound was crappy, the lighting was bad or something like that, I, I pay attention to that. But what I teach on comes from my heart. It comes from what I need to share because I think it will help you. If you tell me you'd like a video on something, I listen to that because I think, okay, I'm listening to what you need help with. But if you're just going to critique because uh, you don't like my hair, my face, my nose or something like that, I'm not going to listen to that. So, but I do, I do have the ability to overcome fear of getting in front of a camera. Um, I've, in my other career, I was always in position of training others and evaluating, uh, what I was saying and how it was effective on other people. So I, I'm not fearful of being in front of people. I'm not fearful of a camera. It's awkward, but I'd rather, if you were sitting across from me right now, rather than that black circle that I'm talking to, I would be a little more comfortable than I am right now. Although I'm very comfortable today talking to you because I'm, I'm seeing you and me as a friend and we're just sharing together. So I still have fears on other things. I'm getting ready to hop on a plane in a few minutes to head to Nevada. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, being with a lot of beekeeper friends, a community, I'm going to be able to spend some time with Garrett Slater, with John Zavishlog, Dave Tarby, Randy Oliver, other great speakers out there that I know that, that we've had conversations with before. Uh, three days of just beekeeping nonstop. No fear at all in that. I don't fear flying. I love to fly. Um, I don't fear traveling. I've traveled a lot. I, I enjoy all that. A little bit of fear because I, I have to make sure I connect correctly to all my connection flights. I don't want to miss a flight. I'm picking up people at the airport in my rental car. I don't want to keep, I don't want to miss my flights. And I mean, if I do, it all works out. Um, I could stay home. I could, re I've spoken seven times already this year in seven weeks, I think. I have a lot of speaking engagements this year. This is the first year that I've said yes to everything that where my schedule was clear. In the years past, I've only chose to speak one or two times a year because of my schedule at home and, and my hobbies and what I like to do. But this year, I've decided to say yes every time my calendar is open. That's amazing. And so I'm doing a lot of traveling. I, I, I have a little bit of trepidation, I guess. If I'm gone, there's a lot that has to happen here. A lot that has to happen in the business, a lot to keep track on the farm to keep all the things running, snow removal, well water working, vehicles going, and so there's, there's that. But all in all, I don't want to be an old man that sits at home and watches TV. So I force myself to say, I'm going to get out, I'm going to speak more, I'm going to travel more, I'm going to be more active, I'm going to... Here's an example. I, I love cycling. And I've always been a cyclist since I was a kid. I did some bike racing in my 20s and 30s, 10-speed bikes, you know. I like to bike. Am I, and I'm on the road biking with cars and traffic. 
Do I fear being ran over by a car, somebody texting or looking at Facebook while they're driving? Absolutely, I do fear that. I've got a little radar unit that's on the back of my bike that shows me on my bike computer, cars coming up behind me. I That's helpful, but it's not gonna save my life. Could I be ran over by a car? Absolutely. Do I fear that? A little. But I can't let that keep me from biking. I try to choose my routes better where there's less traffic, but you know, I'm on the road. I'm not gonna sit back and give up biking because people are idiots on the road and they're using their phones while they're driving and not paying attention to bicyclists on the road. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit at home and in fear and give up something that I've loved all my life. It's risky, but hey, waking up in the morning is risky. Getting out of bed is risky, okay? Driving to the grocery store is risky. Everything's risky. Beekeeping, risky. Beekeeping is enjoyable. Whatever your fear level is, cowboy up and don't let fear keep you from being what you want to be, what you would enjoy being. Now, if you uh, enjoyed the talk today, the coffee time, I've just made another video that you might really enjoy a lot. Um, it's, it, it, it's a video that's really gonna help you, I think, be motivated and understand all the different ways to view hives today. There's so many new hives coming out. And if you're, especially if you're new starting up, you don't know which hive you're supposed to get. A flow hive, uh, a keeper's hive, an appy may hive, uh, uh, a Langstroth long, a Langstroth, a Layens hive. There's so many different hives. Got a video right here that'll help you out. I'll see you guys over there.